Uh, so good morning my dear students today we will discuss total strain energy theory or medium strain energy theory and this theory is also called high theory the first one we will uh, learn what is total strain energy or medium strain energy theory so according to this theory a component will fail if maximum strain energy per unit volume it becomes equal to strain energy in simple tension within elastic limit okay you will listen carefully when a component is subjected to a different types of load combined load that may be tensile compress compression shear of bending so it will be combined load so due to the combined load strain energy will be there that strain energy if it becomes equal this case of equal or not it will it will become equals to strain energy per unit volume when a component is subjected to a unidirectional load tensile load up to elastic limit okay then the component will fail now we'll see what is the strain energy stored in a body of iron the component is subject to a unidirectional load or this simple tensile load okay suppose this is a component we apply only tensile load unidirectional load so due to the application of load strain energy will be stored so how to find out the strain energy this is p this is l so you are applying gradually load so up to elastic limit so that area is the strain energy so that area is equal to half into p into del l okay so that is the strain energy when you apply f gradually applied load simple tension so will that is the strain energy now that strain energy will that strain energy will defined by stress and strain so you see strain energy that is half into p into del l so we know del l is equal to p l by a e so that will be half into p square l by a e again we know p square is equal to p by a so p is equal to sigma into a so we can write sigma square into l divided by sigma square into that will be a a square that is p is equal to sigma square square into l and a into e so it will be half into a cancel sigma square into l into a by e so you can write half into that l into a that is the volume sigma square by e into volume okay so we can write half into sigma again the sigma by e into v so sigma by e we can write strain so we can write half into sigma into strain into v so that is the strain energy so strain energy per unit volume per unit volume so you have to replace this volume so that is the strain energy per unit volume so we can simply define it by u equal to half into stress into strain 
so that is the steel energy per unit volume so that formula we will consider for maximum or total steel energy theory okay now we will consider a three dimensional body which is subjected to a different stress condition suppose sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 so a three dimensional body which is subject to a different types of stress sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 so corresponding strain we know strain sigma 1 by e minus mu by e sigma 2 plus sigma 3 the sigma epsilon 2 sigma 2 by e minus mu by e sigma 1 plus sigma 3 and that is equal to sigma 3 by e minus mu by e sigma 1 plus sigma 2 okay so in a three dimensional body why it is subjected to a three different types of load due to different types of stress what will be the strain energy per unit volume strain energy per unit volume that will be half into sigma 1 epsilon 1 plus half sigma 2 epsilon 2 plus half sigma 3 okay now we we'll put strain half sigma 1 so that will be sigma 1 by e minus mu by e sigma 2 plus sigma 3 plus half sigma 2 sigma 2 by e minus mu by e sigma 1 plus sigma 3 plus half sigma 3 sigma 3 by e minus mu by e sigma 1 plus sigma 2 Okay. Now, if you take common half you take common one by two e. You take common e. In your application, there will be e. So, you take common one by e, one by two e. So. Sigma one, sigma one, sigma one square plus sigma two square plus sigma three square. Sigma one, sigma one, sigma one square. Sigma two, sigma one, sigma two square. Sigma three, sigma three, sigma three square. Minus. So you can see sigma one, sigma two, sigma one, sigma three. Here sigma two, sigma one, sigma two, sigma two, sigma three. So in each cases, two sigma one, sigma two, two sigma two, sigma three, two sigma. One sigma two will be uh, sigma three will be there, so you can take common two mu sigma one sigma two plus sigma two sigma three plus sigma three sigma one. Okay, so mu common along with also you can take common two, so that will be. That will be the strain energy per unit volume. Volume is a component subject to a three-dimensional system. Okay. Now, for no failure criteria, for no failure criteria, or otherwise you can uh, now we consider with the 
स्टेन एंड पॉलिमेंट वॉल्यूम इफ यू कंपेयर टू सब्जेक्टिव टू यूनिडायरेक्शनल लोड और सिंपल टेंशन नाउ दैट ऑल वी हैव डिस्कस हियर इफ यू कंपेयर टू सब्जेक्टिव टू यूनिडायरेक्शनल लोड सो दैट इज u half into stress into strain okay so strain we consider strain is equal to we know sigma by is equal to uh, sigma by strain epsilon that so epsilon is equal to sigma by e so we can write half sigma square by e that means it must be by 2e that is the strain energy stored strain energy parallel volume when the component subject to a simple junction within elastic limit okay so what will be the condition for no failure criteria no failure criteria that should be less than this value this value should be less or equal to this value okay so we can write according to this theory this value should be less or equal to half 1 by 2 sigma square okay so if you consider it sigma y or to each stress so it will be sigma y square by 2e okay so 2e to cancel ultimately it will be sigma y square plus sigma 2 square plus sigma 3 square minus 2 mu sigma 1 sigma 2 plus sigma 2 sigma 3 plus sigma 3 sigma 1 is less or equal to sigma y square that is three dimensional case if you consider sigma 3 or uh, that means two dimensional cases in that case that will be sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square minus 2 mu sigma 1 sigma 2 that will be zero that will be zero that will be equal to sigma square so that is the case according to the maximum strain energy theory or total strain energy theory okay now we will compare this legend we will compare this theory or either this theory is applicable for ductile material or not or the component is subject to the ductile material or, or not okay So we have got sigma one square, sigma two square, plus two mu sigma one, sigma two plus sigma one square. So we can write sigma one by sigma y whole square plus sigma two by sigma y whole square minus two mu sigma one by sigma y sigma two by sigma y. That that are equal to one. So uh, this is an equation of an ellipse. Okay, this is an equation of ellipse. Now, if you see the graph, sigma one. Sigma two. Okay. Now here we have got sigma one square plus sigma two square minus two mu sigma one sigma two. That is sigma one square. Now if you put sigma two is equal to zero, so we will get sigma one is equal to plus minus sigma one. Sigma one is equal to zero. We will get sigma two is equal to plus minus. Sigma y. So here you can see here sigma one is equal to plus minus sigma y. Suppose that is sigma y. That is also sigma y. 
sigma 2 plus minus sigma y upon this is sigma y that is also sigma y so as it is a ellipse with semi major axis and semi minor axis So this is the region. This is the region where there will be no failure of a component. Okay, that is the semi major axis and that is semi minor axis. So that is the safe region if the component is subjected to a load. According to the maximum strain energy theory or total strain energy theory. Okay. Now we compare it. We'll check whether this theory is applicable for ductile materials or not. Okay. Now we will consider only a component which is subjected to a pure torsion. A component which is subjected to pure torsion. Now, suppose a component which is subject to a pure torsion. Okay. Pure torsion will be there. And if you draw the more circle, if you draw more circle, sigma and that is tau. So if the component is subject to the pure torsion, there will be maximum shear stress will be there. So maximum shear stress will be there considering tau max. So center will be this. So maximum shear stress will be this. And you have to draw a circle. Okay. So that is the sigma 1. That is sigma 2. So that sigma 1 is equal to tau max and sigma 2 is equal to minus tau max. Okay. Now we have got sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square minus 2 mu sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma y square. Now put the value sigma 1 square is equal to tau max square plus sigma 2 square minus tau max square minus 2 mu tau max minus tau max sigma y square so that is also tau max square so tau max square 2 tau max square minus minus plus 2 mu tau max square sigma square so you can uh, take common tau max square or you can consider 2 tau max square or tau max square is equal to 1 plus mu less or equal to sigma y square so tau max tau max square is equal to sigma y square divided by 2 into 1 plus mu so tau max less or equal to that will be sigma y square so there will be no root over so that will be sigma y divided by root over 2 into 1 plus mu ok so that tau max should be less or equal to sigma y by 2 into 1 plus mu theoretically tau max tau max should be 
less than or equal to sigma by 2 into 1 plus mu. Okay, so that is the theoretical result. Maximum shear strength. Now, if you consider experimental result, according to the experimental result, tau max should be less or equal to 0 0.57 into sigma y. Okay. Now, if you consider in case of uh, metals, if you consider mu is equal to 0 0.252, 0 0.3. So, if you consider 0 0.3 tau max, that will be sigma y. Uh, if you put a value, that will be coming uh, near about 0 0.62 something, so sigma y. Okay, so tau max less or equal to 0 0.62. Sigma y. That is theoretical result. That is theoretical result and that is experimental. Okay. Now, if you put some values, suppose sigma y. If you value, uh, put any value sigma y, suppose 350. 350 mega Pascal and if you put the value in each case theoretical value and experimental value if you put here tau max it is uh, maybe it is coming uh, 0 0.57 uh, near about 0, uh, 0 0.57 into 350 and it is coming two hundred and if you put this value maybe it will be coming tau max or two one seven it will be coming given this value. Now you can see Experimental results show that if tau max less or equal to 0.57 sigma y, the component will be safe. And theoretically, it shows that if tau max less or equal to 0 0.62 into sigma y, the component will be safe. Now you can see that uh, if you put some values. Consider 350 or 300, we can see that this result there will be no such differences, there is no huge differences between these two values. Okay, so we can use this theory for ductile material. In some cases, we can use this theory for ductile material because there is no huge differences between these two values. So, that theory is maybe applicable for ductile material okay so hope you have understood thank you